this photo and switch to our first interview of the evening and that will be with Lila Robbins. So Lila, I'm going to send you a request. It'll say go live on the screen. Okay, and off we go. Remember for our guests who are joining us tonight, uh, remember you have to join us via a smartphone or a tablet. You can't be using a desktop or a laptop computer. It has to be a, a smartphone or a tablet because those are, the, those are the ones that allow for the Instagram Live format to work for this interview uh, orientation. So as we're waiting for Lila Robbins to join us, I'll give you a little introduction as to who Lila is for those who might not know. Lila. Whoops. <laughs> Have I done something wrong? No, no, I see you. Are you? Oh, you... I can't see you. Can I oh, see you? Okay, let's do this. Uh, I did. Go... I, had, I enabled the microphone. I think I did something wrong. <laughs> okay, I see you just fine. Uh, oh. Let's see. Uh, I, let's do this. I'm going to close it. And okay. Then I'm going to send you the request one more time. We'll try one more time. Okay. Take two. All right. I'll close that out. Oh no, I don't want to do that. I want to. Uh, let's see. How do I? Do... You know, they have changed some of the so formatting. Sorry. Oh, here we go. I can see you now. You got can it you now? See me? I can see you. Yeah. Ah, there, there you are. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm so technologically challenged, really. It's no, really you're doing great. You're, you're, you're it's really a miracle that I'm here. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm very happy to, to be speaking with you. And we've we gone back and forth, uh, but I'm, I'm very happy that we were able to work it out and have this yes. discussion here tonight. Sure. So, so Lila, uh, for, for those who don't know Lila Robbins, uh, I don't know where you've been over the past several years. Lila is one of the premier uh, performers in uh, not just the Shakespeare scene, but in uh, New York and the surrounding areas. Uh, star of screen, star of stage, star of uh, film and TV, just you've been uh, in, in so many things. Uh, and, but right now, you're, you're not home. You're traveling. You're actually shooting something around. You're in Canada, right? Yes, I'm in Toronto as we speak in my, in my sort of hotel residential. <laughs> I have a kitchen. I do have a kitchen, you can see. Oh, there you go. Um, there you go. Yeah, what what are you shooting, shooting up uh, in Canada? It's uh, the season three of The Boys for Amazon. Uh Okay. So this is my, my third bout up here. Uh, the first season I did two episodes. Second season I did six episodes. And I'm about to do three episodes here. And All I've right. been having a lovely time. I love Toronto. But when I arrived, I did have to quarantine for two weeks Oh, which wow. was which was quite challenging. I couldn't leave the room at all. Uh, oh wow! So that so, must have been uh, quite an experience. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> was doing my little workouts here, uh, but <laughs> but the floor the floor is concrete, so it wasn't so great with the jumping jacks. My knees started to talk to me after a oh, while. Oh goodness! Oh goodness! But uh, but now I'm out and about and walking. And I was out with a friend who's up here shooting another show, and a, a friend of mine is shooting Clarice. Uh, oh, the okay, new show. great. Yeah, the new so, the takeoff on uh, uh, Silence of the Lambs. Yes, yeah, so we've been getting together a little bit and walking along the lake, which is really beautiful. All yeah. right, so, so let's, let's talk about the fact that uh, for the past year, everything's been in lockdown. There's been the quarantine. I, I saw the interview with yourself and your significant other, uh, Robert Cuccioli, with the Red Bull Theater about a month back. Mm -hmm. And you were talking at that time about how you've been quarantining together. Uh, so it's, life has been in quarantine for the past year. Is this, yeah. your, is this your first venture out of where you live to, to go shoot in the past year? Or have you been out before this? Uh well, to, I've, I've been shooting out of town here in Toronto, but I was shooting other things in Manhattan. I, I finished up a season of The Blacklist okay. uh, with James Spader. I had a couple more episodes in the fall. And then I did a mini series called Dr. Death, which will be coming out with Christian Slater and Alec Baldwin. And so, so I had several episodes there. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it difficult in the current era, as you say, just for this shoot in Toronto, you went there, you had to quarantine for two weeks. What kind of yeah. protocols are being uh, required of actors and of producers oh. in the current environment? Well, you're tested constantly, tested mm -hmm. constantly. Um, I test two days before I go in for a costume fitting. I test on the day I get a costume fitting. Uh, I test uh, a couple more days before I work and then on the day that I work. I mean, I think I've been tested probably about 30 times Wow! Uh, in the last six months. Yeah, so, so it's, it's a it's lot of testing, testing, testing. A lot of testing. I, you probably spend yeah. more time testing than you do getting uh, <laughs> fitted for costumes. Yes, probably. Or even the takes you get. <laughs> and, then, and then is it 
is there some apprehension of after you're tested and after everyone, everything's set, I mean, you go and you have your scenes with the other actors, you know, tr- right. and, you know, when you act, you, you're, you're close, you're intimate with people, you're up face to face. In some cases, you're, mm-hmm. you're, you're, you're spitting in each other's faces when you're talking. Is there some apprehension in the coronavirus era of how, is there like a resistance of how to act or, or is no. it just? Well, I haven't been, I haven't been worried about it. I know that they've, I think, uh, Screen Actors Guild has reduced the amount of actors that can be together in, in one room. Mm-hmm. We wear our masks in between takes when we're not, when they're changing the camera setup. You know, sometimes you can just hang out on the set, but now you have to go back to your dressing room or back mm-hmm. to your trailer. You have to kind of get off the set. When, when they say rolling cameras, you take off the mask and you, and you act. And, and it's an interesting thing because you know how the masks sometimes leave marks on your face. Right. <laughs> or, you know, we've got to deal with a bit of that when we're acting. But um, I haven't been concerned about, uh, you know, my fellow actor as far as being close to them because we've been tested so much. Bo- right. All of us have always been tested. So I'm not concerned about that aspect of it. But you are in an environment where you're around the crew and you're around other people. They're all masked all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, even there's no, you know, usually there's like a craft service table. We don't have that sort of thing. Everything's individually wrapped. Our right. lunches are brought to us. So we're right. not all sitting in a cafeteria together. So it's, it's you know. There's no longer a, that communal aspect of it. Exactly. Which right. makes it not as fun. But, uh, you know, at least we're getting through it and, and we're still making some shows. So that's good. Well, there you go. And, and we already have yeah. some, some uh, you're getting some love from the audience. Uh, you have someone telling us that uh, they fell in love with your character in the blacklist and that it was a oh. great performance. <laughs> <laughs> they fell in love with my character. I'm the one that America <laughs> loves to hate. I'm, I'm so, I'm so uh, duplicitous in that, uh, in that show. But it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed my time there. Well, it was really a good time. You, uh, you, you have a long history in the theater. And, and I personally, when I first came across your work, it was about maybe like 15 or, or so years ago, uh, Ago, uh, you were doing Frozen on Broadway. Yes. And, and Not I to be mistaken with the musical. Right. Not to mistaken <laughs> with, with the Disney musical Frozen. This was yeah. a very, if, if someone came to that show expecting Anna and Elsa, <laughs> they would be very, you know, for a yeah. very uh, sad yes. surprise. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's, it's, for those who don't know, it's a show by a British writer. I think she's an Irish writer, uh, Bryony Lavery. And it's about a mother whose child is abducted and killed. And then uh, your character was the, the psychiatrist who yeah. is speaking to the murderer. Yes, and, exactly. And, and I was all the way in the back of the house and I, I was so enthralled by your work. Uh, I mean, there, you're, there are some actors whose work is, is, especially in a large Broadway house, it's, it's kind of small and it's easy for it to get lost in, in a big space like that. And there are other mm. actors who just have such a, an intensity and such a connection to the, what they're doing that even in the cheap seats all the way at the back of the house, you can feel oh. every, every bit of what, the, what they're doing. And, that, and that's exactly what I was feeling. So, so uh, oh, 15, 15 or 20 years later, uh, kudos <laughs> to you for, for an amazing performance. And then uh, oh. about, about a year or so after that run, uh, when that uh, became, it started to go around the loop regionally, uh, a producer called me to come in and direct uh, a regional production of that. Oh. And I, and I think, I think uh, unconsciously, I was trying to get the, the actress to not, not to mimic your line readings, but to, to match the intensity that you had, in that oh. form, which, which I think was, was a failing <laughs> attempt. But, but that's, that's something that I've, I've always enjoyed about your work and whatever I've seen you in, whether on stage or on screen, is that there's, there's a combination of, a, of deep intensity, uh, but there's also a, a subtlety to the way you approach things. Uh, and, and there's a lot of technique as well. So, so what, tell us about some of your, your background. What's, what's, what was your training to get involved in acting? Uh, well, I, um, in college, I did every play I could do. I was a music major. I was a piano major, but I was always sneaking down the hallway and I, and I got cast very well when I was in college, but I knew by the end of that, that I needed more training because, uh, I just knew there was more to learn, obviously. And so I auditioned for Yale and a couple of other grad schools and I got into Yale, which was the best thing that ever happened to me. Uh, it was a very small class. It was only seven women and 10 men. And I felt very fortunate to be selected and, uh, then I got hooked up into Williamstown Theater Festival with Nikos Sakharopoulos, which kind of gave me my professional start. 
and then moved to New York uh, doing the real thing uh, with Jeremy Irons. That was my first play in New York, actually. On Broadway, oh, wow. In what, New a, York. what a yeah. way to start in New York. Yeah, I went right to a Broadway show. And, oh, uh, with was, Jeremy yeah. Irons, of all people. That's amazing. Yeah, that was That's really fantastic. a great, great opportunity. And then, you know, I've been... Uh, <laughs> In film and television, but but mostly my focus was theater early on. You know, I was doing a lot of plays and I would go to the regionals. Uh, I'm originally from St. Paul, Minnesota, so I, I loved going back to the Guthrie Theater. I've done four shows there. And, and I think one, uh, one of your most famous uh, is uh, the Ensign Cleopatra that you did there uh, at the Guthrie. And that was with your your soon-to-be uh, life partner, uh, Robert Cuccioli, right? Yes, yes. actually, we were already partners at that point. Uh, I didn't meet Robert uh, doing a play. Uh, we met at a benefit for the Shakespeare Theater of New Jersey. Okay. Uh, we were both singing for the benefit. But this was the first time we were working together. So we really had to work out how we were going to approach it. And when, what we decided was that we weren't going to talk about the play outside of the rehearsal room. That's that it would always be, in front of, always to be in front of the director so that it was always a professional sort of experience as we were working. Right. Leave, um, leave the work at work and keep the, yes. the home life separate. <laughs> yes. Right. I think that was more peaceful that way, I think. <laughs> and we have someone else in the, in the chat box asking someone from Scotland. Ruby Hutchinson from Scotland is saying, oh. any more Apple family plays? Oh, uh, from Scotland. How wonderful. Well, I have to say that was one of the saving graces during this first, the, the first COVID when we shut down, you know, it was devastating for all actors feeling there was absolutely no work. There was nothing to do. And then Richard Nelson, uh, the author of the Apple Family Plays that I had done beginning 10 years ago, uh, said he was writing a Zoom play. And uh, he was the first one, I believe, to write a play for Zoom, not on Zoom. Not a play on Zoom, but a play right. for play Zoom. Specifically this, for the Zoom format. Yes, and that the, that the family was actually having a Zoom meeting. These, mm -hmm. uh, there were four plays we did uh, in uh, one a year at the public theater. And then the final year, we did all four of them in rep. And then we filmed them for local PBS. And then the same family, Richard then decided he wanted to write some Zoom plays for us. And we did three of them uh, starting in, gosh, I think it was April and... Uh, I think the last one was in August, but there were three of them and it was a real lifesaver as far as <laughs> staying creative and staying, feeling like we were still, you know, alive in some way. And yeah, I was I very grateful for that opportunity. I remember seeing uh, some of that, that work and it was, that was exciting work. And as you say, you know, and, and I, I talked about this, uh, I did a, a something around uh, the beginning of the year where I did a, a year in review uh, article where I uh, did a, um, uh, like, a, like a summary of, of everything that I had seen in uh, 2020, all the Zoom Shakespeare that I'd seen in 2020. Uh -huh. And that's, that's kind of the through line of it all is that in this forced uh, shift to the Zoom environment, there's been such an outburst of creativity and such a redefinition of what the medium is capable of uh, that in a way, as, as excited as I am for the return to live theater, I'm almost remiss to see some of this intimacy that we have, just you tap your phone and you can see live Shakespeare, live performance, live that the Apple series uh, plays. Yes. And Apple plays. It, it's, it's great that this new uh, realm of performance is now available to us. Yeah. And, and I have to say, you know, at the beginning, it was a real learning curve because I had never Zoomed in my life. So <laughs> my first Zooms were with the cast and with Richard. And, and because it was so new, we also had to learn the parameters of how do you how do you deal with a smaller frame when do you leave the frame when do you come back what does it do when you come closer when you go for all, all these very basic things that all of us right. now do very automatically but in those days back in march it was all so it was new. all new it was all new and you know as zoom has as the months have gone on zoom has added more functionality to allow for some of the things that people have needed of it but as you, yeah, as you say in the beginning it was taking something that was just supposed to be for business meetings and yes. trying to reorient it for live performance uh, yes and, and people and, are getting so creative about how they're editing things uh absolutely. bob and i just did a play for the amas musical theater group uh, a 9-11 play called uh, Home Sweet Homeland. And uh, there's, you know, editing involved and, and backgrounds involved, you know, all kinds of things. They're, as you said, they're adding, they're embellishing and, right. and actually getting to, it to be quite a sophisticated art form. So some, some, of the, some of the producers and directors that I've been speaking to over the last several months on this program have been telling me how uh, as, as they have been 
adapting to this format, it's, it's almost as if they've had to shift from their background in theater to be mm -hmm. a film producer or a TV producer in some yes, sense, yes. Uh, because that's, it's, that's a new, it's your, you're in this mediated digital space and you have to work with the constraints and the opportunities that, that provides you. Uh, and yes. to that end, uh, going back to the, the uh, screen work that you do, someone from, I believe from Canada, you're up in Canada, you're in Toronto, someone else from Canada mm -hmm. is saying, hello from Canada, how fun was it acting on the blacklist? It's one of my favorite shows. Oh, it was a lot of fun. Everybody is so great on the show. James Spader is such a lovely guy. And uh, I found it, uh, it was an interesting character for me, you know, because, because she's so duplicitous. It was almost, you know, playing a double personality. And I loved working with Megan. We had a wonderful time. Uh, you know, she was playing my, my so-called daughter on the show. And... Um, and it was also very convenient. It was at Chelsea Piers where we shot. So it was li literally oh. a hop skip from my home. So it didn't <laughs> take a lot to get to work either. And right. I just really enjoyed my time there. Yeah. So, so let's, let's now that since we are New York Shakespeare, let's get into some of your, your Shakespeare work. Mm -hmm. uh, so you spoke about your, your training uh, at Yale and yes. then you, you jumped into the, the, the deep end with in live theater with uh, Jeremy Irons. Where in there did you do all your, your, primary Shakespeare studies or was it uh, continuous? Well, I studied Shakespeare at Yale. Our second mm -hmm. year was all about verse. I had studied with a gentleman named David Hammond. Mm -hmm. And then my first professional Shakespeare was at the Shakespeare Theater of New Jersey uh, under Bonnie Monty's uh, direction. Mm -hmm. And we did uh, Twelfth, Twelfth Night okay. with, with Elizabeth McGovern as Viola. And oh, I was wow. Olivia and Edward Herman was Malvolio. Fantastic. So, so we had a really wonderful group and that was great. And then I had an opportunity to do Merchant of Venice at the Public Theater. Fantastic. Uh, Barry Edelstein directed and I played Portia and that was a lovely time too. And I learned a lot from the speech guy that was on the show who worked with us was Ralph Zito. Mm -hmm. And he taught me a lot. Uh, he taught me a lot about how to approach the, the verse. And, um, and then I did the Scottish play uh, for the Shakespeare Theater of New Jersey. And that was also uh, with Robert. That, with Robert, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we went to the Guthrie to do Antony and Cleopatra for Mark Lemos. And then I did it again for Theater for a New Audience uh, at the Duke Theater in New York. Oh, wow. Uh, and at uh, Shakespeare Theater I also in New Jersey, I also did uh, Comedy of Errors, which was really fun. I did that with Dana Reeve. And we played Sisters. And we did it kind of an, as an a la Fellini kind of a... Uh, we had a Fellini kind of uh, design to it and we were using Italian accents actually with the iambic pentameter and it went quite well. That, that kind that of great? language really went very well with doing it. Isn't that it. great? Yeah, yeah, with a little accent on it, yeah. And now you even teach, uh, you teach Shakespeare, right? Or is it just acting in general? Um, I've been teaching acting in general. I've, I've done a couple of uh, adjunct things at the Fordham and then I teach at HB. Uh, recently I taught a class on Chekhov, uh, with Frank Wood. We were sort of tag teaming in case somebody got a job and couldn't be there. But I, I would say I feel most comfortable teaching Chekhov. That's sort mm -hmm. of my real go-to. Okay. Um, and then I've coached, I've coached people in Shakespeare, uh, but I've never taught a formal class in, in Shakespeare. Okay. But I do one-on-one right. -on -one coachings uh, and, I, and I enjoy teaching. I really enjoy teaching a lot. Oh, you're, you're a fantastic yeah. performer and, and uh, just watching you uh, anytime I've seen you, whether on stage or on screen, for me has been like watching a master class in performance. Oh. So, so, so <laughs> I, I, I feel like I should send you some money for, for the classes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, taken those thank far. you. Uh, okay, so oh. we are running a little bit past uh, what yes, our like, anticipated schedule was. I'd love to keep on uh, picking your brain and hear more, but we have uh, mm -hmm. other wonderful guests that we have to move over to. So I'm going to sure. say thank you so much, Lila. It's been such a pleasure thank chatting you. with you. And hopefully yes. we can chat again at some point. Yes, soon. of course. And now I get to go to the basketball game. Oh, are, you, are you watching the basketball? No, no, oh, not right the, now. It's the, it's the final right now between Baylor and Gonzaga. Oh, oh, I always oh. tune in about this time and catch up on a little sport. <laughs> Enjoy. Enjoy. Yes, well, it's thanks so much. Very pleasure you. talking to you, Rodney. Okay. We'll Take care. Touch. Take care. Okay, that was Lila Robbins. Okay, so now we will.